Hi everyone, welcome back to the Big Kid Real Talk podcast. Uh, today we have Stephanie, Destiny, Lucy, and I'm Emma. Uh, and today we're going to be discussing um, with the conviction of Derek Chauvin yesterday. Do we think that the world is changing? Yeah. So I was watching the actual live conviction. I saw the actual judges go and say, on second degree, he is guilty, third guilty, and manslaughter, obviously. And like, I was watching it with a lot of people. It was like a watching party, if you want to call it. <laughs> and there was like a lot of joy, but also a lot of like uncertainty because it was like, what does this actually show? One person's been convicted, but this happens all the time. So, mm. um, I personally like I don't watch the conviction, but I agree with the penalty. Like, although I honestly do think like he could have got a, a few more years, but it's honestly reasonable to be honest because like although it is one incident, as Destiny said, this happened. This does happen all over the world, and it's not. It doesn't like. It starts with one person making a change, like because of the murder that he done, this caused like a global protest, like everyone started to rise up and like speak their thoughts, which honestly caused like, which actually was really good. Mm -hmm. So I feel like more now than ever, the world is actually starting to accept that people need to see the change. But don't you feel like they, they only actually charged him with all, like the charges that he did get just because they were pressured to and they saw like the effect that it was having having sorry I, I agree though um like i've been watching the trial as it's going on and it wasn't as clear cut as you as you watched the trial it wasn't as clear cut that he was actually going to get convicted <laughs> like the defense had to uh, both the offense and defense had to have multiple the witness calls multiple times and it was like if there was no societal pressure, I can guarantee you wouldn't have got convicted. Like, I can almost guarantee that wouldn't have happened. So, how much has this really changed or just reactionary? So, you're thinking that the reason that he got convicted is because there was such public outcry about it and because of all the protests. Do you think if those hadn't happened that it wouldn't have been the same conviction, maybe? Well, let's look at it this way. If he wasn't convicted, what do you think would have happened? Like, what do you think would have happened in America and in Minneapolis? <laughs> like, there would have been protests because mm -hmm. no one's going to stand for that, are they? So, they just kind of convicted him to appease everyone else. And because, like, white privilege is a thing, like, it is, and it's, like, it can be really negative. I feel like if it wasn't such a pressure to those who actually were in, involved with the trial, then they wouldn't have given him that many years. Whereas, because it was such a pressure to them, they felt like they had to prove something that the that the justice the justice system wasn't this white privileged supremacist like meaning behind it. So I feel like people are starting to realize that because like from like years ago, people realized the so the justice system was like very corrupt. So I feel like now more than ever they're starting to change it, and they know like because they're gonna keep getting pressured about it, they need to change it. They need to make a change mm -hmm. to it. Otherwise, it's not going to get anyone every, anywhere. Do you think that the conviction shows that they are wanting to change the current um, like policing system or judicial mm. system? <laughs> or do you think it was more symbolic of like, this guy is one bad apple and actually that's why we're coming down so hard on him and the rest of us are like, we're doing our jobs and like, we're doing what we're meant to be doing. I think it was just a one-off to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, like Steph said, there's definitely white privilege. Like, if I don't even know his name, but if the police officer yeah, sure. was, yeah, if he was a black man or an Asian man, then they would have been convicted time ago. And for it to have taken this many months just to get him sent down, simply because he was white, mm -hmm. like it's just a one-off. Do you guys think that if the guy wasn't white, or white, sorry, that he would this would have got this much attention? Like, obviously the. The justice system is broken. The police system is broken. Like, as you saw recently, someone else got shot and it was a taser, apparently. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, do you think if Derek Chauvin, the person who killed George Floyd, wasn't a white person, this would have so much attention worldwide? No, because mm. they're really skeptical about yeah. what they want to do with a white man. Yeah. 
Um, I also feel like maybe it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't yeah. the right guy. Like, yeah, the police system is working all around. Yeah. True, of the but the likeliness of it happening. Yeah, I feel like, like it's that. more focused on if a white officer shoots black, um, coloured people because it's such a big thing where it's either mistaken, oh, as a taser or as something, oh, I misclip, I mistook it out. It's one of them things where you know they didn't, they didn't mistake it. You know they knew what they were doing because. As it's been proven before, on guns, like there's safety guns, like it's on, there's been like multiple theories on how you can't mistake it, but yet people still do. It just shows that there is like white privilege and racism inside of the police force. And it's not even just in America, it's everywhere. Like it gets this much attention because it's still happening and it's been happening for loads of years. And it's gotten to the point where people are getting so tired of it that they need that it needs to start making like it needs to start changing otherwise it's going to end badly for everyone Mm -hmm. i mean so yesterday there was also an incident i think at the same time as the conviction that the 16 year old girl black girl was shot and killed by a police officer who was called in um in america as well like at the same time um i feel like that's kind of indicative that although the convictions happened like they're still it hasn't been like a massive change in in that respect. So I guess my question is, what do you think it would take to like make a bigger change to the whole of the system rather than just like individual cases where people show such outcry? I think it's just gone too far to the point that there's not there's nothing that you can do as a collective to change everyone's thoughts on it. Really? I disagree. <laughs> so, I, think, <laughs> I think that regardless of what you do or like what you try to convince people, there'll still be some people who have those racist thoughts embedded in their minds. So oh, there's no change. Yeah, you can't change everyone, of course. But I think if you were to try and change the justice system, it would have to have complete reform. Like the entire thing would need to be changed. So I think there's only there's only two viable ways to do this. It's either the legal, like us voting for candidates who will actually do that, actually adults taking the charge or this is going to sound anarchist but complete revolt is is either one of those two options because Mm -hmm. if nothing happens then it's just gonna this is just gonna be keep on being a cycle it was like um when george floyd was killed there was all this protest on instagram the actual protests but they've kind of stopped do people care or is it just reactionary Mm -hmm. like if you don't keep on putting in the same effort what's going to change I guess with like all big changes in history where people have um, gained rights through protesting and things, it's ta- it's taken like a really long time. And I guess, I, th- I think when it happens, when that change happens is when you make it so difficult to like continue with your day-to-day sort of like services or the systems as they currently exist. You know what I mean? Like with protesting, that makes life difficult for people with it's like you have to make life difficult in order for them to think, okay, the better alternative is to like change what we're doing so that because otherwise people aren't compelled to make changes if they're like, well, if nothing changes for me. People don't like change, you know. Um, actually, do you think young people sort of in this respect prefer change to older people in terms of like systemic change or change in general, maybe? yeah change in general like just based like just based on everything because like everything you see in the news you just hope like deep down that's not what you're gonna be that's not where that's that's Mm. not what's gonna happen to you so it's one of them things where you wish like you hope that your future doesn't turn out like that because for people it's it's very like dangerous on these streets so when you go out it's one of them things where you don't know what's gonna happen there's danger all around you so considering what's going on in the news, you have to make sure you're alert all the time. So it's not one of the things where you're safe, like you're, you know where you are. Like it's one of the things where you still have to be cautious. Like you still have to be alert. It's, it just has to be one of those things where you, you, you know you're, you're safe, but you still got to be cautious because you know that it could happen to you regardless of where you are, regardless of how safe you may be. You know it could happen to you. Mm-hmm. So it's like you want, you are more inclined to want change because there's yeah. a direct threat to you currently. Yeah. You guys feel the same? 100%. I think people only change, or people only enact change when they feel attacked. Like, um, if you, I think you guys would all know this, obviously, with um, 
the focus on, let's say, like sexual assault and stuff. The reason that people are, or men anyway, are taking more of a stand is because they're looking at it and they're seeing how people around them are acting and they're like, I could refuse to allow this and let this happen. So unless people listen and learn to actually take action, it's not going to, you know, resolve anything. Mm-hmm. Do you think, what do you think that, do you think there's anything that young people can do currently to sort of change the actions of adults who have no, more power in that way? it has to start with the adults. Because if it doesn't start with the adults, it will, it will never make its way down to the youngers. Because it's one of them things where if someone starts it, it will go into a chain and go into a cycle that will continue going into those children. Mm-hmm. But I think adults are too stuck in their ways. Yeah. Like the younger generation are definitely more impressionable. So if you start with them and teach them what's right and wrong, then even their parents that might have poor views, they'll see a different and think, oh no, that's not what I'm going to believe. That ain't right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I guess the thing about change is it like, it's like the power of the people, isn't it, in a lot of ways. Do you think that young people, I feel like naturally young people have less power than adults because they don't have the right to vote yet and, and things like that. Do you think if enough young people came together to make a change that it would make a difference at all? It, mm. uh, it depends on how like how open the, par- the parent or adult is because not every adult in this world is open to hearing a younger person's thoughts just mm. because of their age it's like just because we're younger than you does not mean we may like i understand you're, you're older than us you're mar- you're wiser than us wiser. but yeah <laughs> wiser but at the same time we know more about nowadays than you do like we're in this generation a lot more than you actually understand it so it's one of the things where they have to be optimistic and open enough to actually understand that nowadays it's not all what they think is happy or like nothing bad ever happened. It's just one of the things where it's gotten worse. And if it doesn't make a change, it's going to get worse off. Like mm-hmm. it's not gonna be all sunshine and rainbows. It's going to end really badly for everyone. What are you mm. guys saying? I think if we're going to change, I think young people hold the keys to the future whilst all the generations hold the keys to the present. There's Present can only change if adults, like passing laws and listening to other adults, because they won't listen to us. Like, as you said, adults only listen to other adults. They don't respect children to that same degree. But if we're talking about, let's say, 10, 20 years down the line, like maybe another generation, then actual serious change will be happening mm. to where these kind of things will be more taboo. And they're taboo anyway, but they're going to, you know, be ostracized. Mm-hmm. So... As you were saying, like adults obviously need to listen to us more, but I think we definitely hold the keys to the future. Why do you think there's such a difference in perception between uh, adults and younger people in terms of how we see the world? Like, I feel like there's a big gap between how we perceive the world and how like someone's parents might perceive the world in terms of like they might think we're actually doing really great right now, whereas younger people are like we're actually have so much more to do. Where do you think that difference comes from? Because we like. Because we've lived in like different times, what was normalized when they were like our age wouldn't be normalized now. So things that we be that sorry, things that we see as wrong, they'll see like oh no, it's not that bad. Like it's mean to me. That's why. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we're just more impressionable. Yeah. In general. Especially if they're like traditional parents <clears throat> that are like in a certain culture that doesn't allow things that you're that allows it nowadays. Like, it's one of them set in stone traditional parents and adults where it's like, oh, I grew up like this, so you have to grow up like this. You can't do this because I couldn't do that. It's like they're trying to teach us that just because they couldn't do that, we're not allowed to do it. Mm. Like, we can't express how to, like, do our, do our own way or, like, go or, like, just, like, adventure ourselves. It's just like we have to do every single thing that they tell us to do just because they've done it and their parents told them to do it. Mm. It's just like, they have to like, certain people just need to like be open to actually understand what this world is based on now. Because my, like, my parents always compare me to my sister and their, and their era. And it's not, it's like, when it, it, I always say to them, it's not your generation. Like gen- this generation is a lot different compared to yours. It was less technology for you. It was less social media for you. 
it was a lot less toxic for them than it is now. I feel like over these years, it's gotten so much more toxic that they don't actually understand it. So they just need to have an open mind and actually try to understand that for us, it's not always good. Like it's not mm. good news most of the time. It's just negative, negative, negative. And especially cancel culture. Cancel culture is just a menace to this, to this day. Like on social media, it's everywhere now. Do you think cancel culture is that bad? Yes. Really? Yeah. I think we've discussed this before, but like... We have discussed why? this before. Why? Why is it bad? Um, why can't you cancel people? They're willing to cancel everything. Like if you do something that they don't agree with, anybody agrees with, everyone will attack that person because they don't agree with it. Like it's like you can be out, outside living your life and say you want to go ride a bike. And then someone will say, oh, but you can't be riding a bike because it's, it could be freezing that day. But you just want to ride a bike because of the fun for it. But they'll be like, oh, no, why are you riding a bike? Because it's cold. You should be at home being warm. Mm. It's one of the things where because someone has an opinion about it that they, that, you, that they don't like about it, they will pull people on their team and go against you. So it's almost like they want people to conform yeah. to like one thought, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you like... If your views aren't quote unquote mainstream, then people will attack you. That's usually what happens. And I think with how free and liberated we want ourselves to be, we can't. Like, in cancel culture, cancel culture, when it comes to somebody being racist, for example, that isn't cancel culture. That's just liability. Yeah. That's you being held accountable for your yeah. actions. Mm. But when it's um, somebody does something that you personally disagree with, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to like everything about everyone. You can just let them do what they want to do. Yeah. And so I guess, do you think that, I guess you kind of touched on it, you think the older generation maybe don't have, aren't as open-minded as yeah. the current generation. 100%. Do you think that's because of social media? Because you guys get to see the world from lots of people's different perspectives yeah. now, rather than just the perspectives that's given to you from your parents. 100%. Because mm-hmm. without the social media that the older generation didn't have, like they didn't get to see and let's say they grew up in a different place like not the uk they're just used to seeing what they saw like what they grew up around mm-hmm. so they won't see things from different countries on like how they're living life but then because we have social media we're able to see different perspectives on everything mm-hmm. and i guess also because of social media people are like even more aware of things like the george floyd case and people are able to sort of um, sort of step in on that a bit more because they see they see more how it's impacting people um, so that makes sense in terms of if you were to want like the older generation to see things the way you see things would you ever consider like getting them onto social media in that case Hard to, to like say. open up their world view Hard to say. they can stick to Facebook yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's for everyone but especially for the older generation just because like they can be a bit more sensitive than us because we're used to it. Like we're right. prone to it. So in introducing the old, like older people to it, it's like a whole new world for them that they've never been in. It's new. They don't know what they're doing. Could so be if toxic. they see something- Could be awful. Yeah. Exactly. I, don't want, I don't want someone's grandma <laughs> being yeah. with Instagram comments. Like, like. It's one of those things where they can say something completely like, so, something Outdated. in their opinion. Yeah. And everyone will attack them for it. So it's one of them things where you have to be so like used to people saying negative stuff to you, regardless of how deep or how petty it can be, because mm-hmm. people are always going to say something about it. So I just don't think like, I mean, I'd be open to introducing older people, but like, I just don't think they would be able to do it just because of how like toxic it's become. Mm-hmm. Fair. All right, um, one last question before we wrap up then. Like, um what do you think we as individuals could do to uh, like progress society mm. I, i've turned 18 i'm gonna i registered to vote like a couple of days ago it was the 19th that's when it expired i registered to vote then so i'm gonna be voting as soon as i can so what is everyone else's idea of what they can do to help mm. i don't think that like, people under 18 are given enough of a chance yeah. anyway Fair. i don't think there's much that we can do yeah. I mean, conversations like this help, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but not everyone will listen. It's one of them things where people aren't open enough to listen to a younger person's voice just because of their age. Like, 
a lot of adults don't listen to minors even when they're in the right they will insist 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 on being right even though they're wrong so it's one of the things that if we do say something not everyone's going to listen there will be but some someone might there'll be some but there won't be all of them they won't accept it they won't be agreeing with it they'll just be like oh because they're a minor they don't know what they're talking about because they're a minor they have no voice they they're useless they don't need to be speaking it's just one of them things where we can't say anything without being told oh just because um because we're young we can't say anything because we we're wrong but even though we could be right but like i like destiny said before we're like like our generation is the future yeah. like the older generation they're not even gonna be here so if it's more like we have conversations about topics like these and like topics about anything that's happened in society if we have it with other people our age then it could actually have an impact rather mm. than just talking to adults yeah um to end it off i'm gonna say change is made in baby steps uh thank you for listening to the real talk podcast and we all sign out now bye okay